Well, I've been writing fiction since I was a, uh, a teenager, long before I even became interested in science, because I'm actually trained as a scientist myself. And I've been working on uh, several novels for about seven years now. And they, they all feature scientists as characters, because I'm really interested in um, the culture of science and the people who get involved in science. And so I don't normally write short stories, but when the um, issues contest came to my attention, it seemed perfect, especially given the topics that they were looking for are very close to the things that I often write about. And I decided to try my hand. Um, it was an interesting contest in the sense that they asked for a presses before writing the entire story. So I wrote what is essentially a 250 word abstract of the story, and that allowed me to um, explore the idea uh, in my mind without necessarily committing myself to uh, a certain amount of effort on paper. Um, I was very pleased to find out that my presses had been selected as one of the finalists and I was asked to write the complete story, um, at which point I faced the dilemma of trying to figure out a, a plot for the story because my presses had been very focused on the two uh, main characters of the story. Um, but I worked on the story, um, uh, had it, uh, ran it through my writing group, um, and did some revisions to the story and submitted it in the fall and was very pleased to find out that I had one. The story takes place about 40 years in the future and looks at two academic scientists who are locked in a battle with one another for what's called competitive tenure. And what I wanted to do was explore some of the trends that are currently ongoing in science about uh, the demands that are placed on individual scientists, um, the competitiveness that's out there for grant funding, how long it takes people to establish themselves and their careers, uh, and even some of the funding sources that are out there uh, and how those are changing over time. What's interesting is that one of these two scientists is a member of the Pythia of Science, which is a sisterhood of female scientists who have essentially subjugated their personal lives to become wholly, uh, put their whole identity into their scientific work. And that was, um, I was really interested in exploring uh, the kinds of demands that we put on people uh, in these and other careers and how those are increasing over time. Policymakers aren't looking for fiction for morality tales or to tell them exactly what to do. And I think if a fiction writer starts off a story with an argument or a lesson in mind, it's the kiss of death for that piece of work. I just try to set down something that seems true to me. And in this story is clearly set in a different world from ours. But I think if the characters and their actions ring true to the reader, they can relate to um, those characters and to the dilemma portrayed in the story. And I was trying to look at some trends that are going on in the research world um, and exaggerate them a little bit into the future to see uh, how things might turn out in 40 years um, if, if current trends continue. Um, part of the significance of fiction for policymakers is just to allow them to think differently about things. Um, one of my favorite novels is Life and Fate by Vasily Grossman, which is a book about the Soviet Union during World War II. One of the main characters of that book is a physicist who's been blocked in his work for a long time. After he's evacuated from Moscow, he's able to have a free political discussion um, with some others. And after that discussion, he has a breakthrough uh, in his work, and he attributes it to be able, being able to think and talk in a different way than he normally has been. And I think that's true of fiction um, and how it can influence policymakers as well.